We start with our newsmaker segment and talk about some of the major issues in Kansas City, Missouri. Joining me is Councilman Lee Barnes, Jr., who represents the 5th District. Mr. Barnes was elected at large, that is, citywide, in 2015. He's been in the news recently for his off-stated concerns about the choice of Edgemore to build the new international airport. We are pleased to welcome to Ruckus, Councilman Barnes. Councilman, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me, Mr. Shannon. Uh, we're told that the City Council will have the Memorandum of Understanding completed with Edgemore by the end of January. We're almost at the end of January. Do you think it's going to happen? Well, I think there's going to be a Memorandum of Understanding presented to us on uh, next Tuesday, and we then will evaluate uh, whether we're going to move forward or not. Uh, I was correct, I think, in saying that you often express discontent about Edgemore getting the contract. Can you tell us what it is about Edgemore and their arrangement that you don't like? Well, it, not necessarily discontent with them getting the contract, but uh, I sat through a lot of uh, the interviews, I sat through the presentations, and by far uh, there were two more firms that had better presentations and better proposals that were presented to us as a council. And when we look at those kind of things, I was, I was adamant about uh, the community benefits agreements that we were trying to set out for the entire city as well as um, minority and women business contracting. And the other proposals had better uh, proposals as it related to those items. And those two companies were AECOM and Burns and, Burns and, and McDonald's? McDonald's? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. What kinds of things did they offer that Edgemore did not? Well, uh, quite honestly, Edgemore at that time offered uh, nothing as it related to community benefits. Uh, uh, explain we, a community benefit. Well, what happens is uh, in a development of that size, you try to um, enhance with the relationship with the developer, enhance the com entire community with the project that's going to happen. Uh, it's a billion dollar project. So take, say, for instance, you want have, them to build something for the city. We want them to com contribute to funds that are uh, that we have established that uh, in particular with uh, other districts. Uh, that are uh, what we call severely distressed districts. And, we, and we've done this in, in the last two years, we've done this with several other hotels that we're, have, uh, we've gotten CIDs with. So those are the kind of things we want. They have to with. provide something beyond just building the airport to get the airport contract. Yes. All right. yes. Uh, last week, I interviewed the head of the local NAACP, uh, Reverend Williams, who said the privatizing of sidewalks in Westport would lead to racial profiling and civil rights violations. You voted to privatize <clears throat> sidewalks in Westport. Do you think the Reverend is incorrect in his assessment? Well, I think he's correct in his assessment that it could lead to that. Well, almost anything could lead to that, right. could it not? So, uh, but, but as a policymaker, my, my thought was that um, the business owners in Westport are trying to do something to curt curtail uh, what has hap been happening in, in Westport for the last several years. And ultimately, we as a city have a right uh, within the uh, bounds of the ordinance to take those uh, sidewalks and streets back if we think that some violations are happening that are leading to violations of people's civil rights. So, And the checking of people in Westport for five hours, two nights a week won't begin until the spring. Yes, sir. Yes. And won't there be monitors who are trained standing by to make sure everybody is treated fairly and if someone is not, they can lodge a complaint on the spot? That's exactly right. And those, th those are some of the things that we made sure were put into the ordinance. And uh, I think if we... If we do that kind of monitoring, I think we'll be uh, successful in uh, contributing to a safer Westport. Construction has finally begun, believe it or not, on the downtown convention hotel. <laughs> yes. Uh, does that mean great things for Kansas City once it's finished? I, I, re I really do think it's going to be a, a, a good um, investment for the city in terms of having more conventions come, uh, having more economic development that happens around uh, the downtown area. I think elections in Kansas City are next year, are they not? Yes, 2019, yes. Yeah. And uh, almost everybody on the council is said to be running for mayor. Are you running for mayor? Everyone except me. You're not running for <laughs> no. mayor. Do you think you'll run for re-election? <laughs> yes, I'll run for re-election. Well, what, what's it been like, just quickly on the council? What's the experience been like for you? Well, the experience has been real good in terms of trying to get to uh, an understanding of what the people of Kansas City want, need, and making Kansas City a safer, more livable city. All right, sir. Thank you very much for coming in. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I appreciate your time. Continued success. Thank you. That is Kansas City, Missouri Councilman Lee Barnes. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.